This interactive course will help you master CT of the abdomen and pelvis. It includes over 40 scrollable cases that best demonstrate the most important emergency pathologies. Each case includes a walkthrough of imaging findings, everything you need to know in concise format, including how to approach certain pathologies, and the most important imaging pearls. By the end of the course, you'll have a strong grasp of basic and more advanced topics, ultimately becoming a better and more clinically oriented radiologist. This is the course page with introductory material, course instructions, and over 40 cases that range in difficulty that are split into sections, upper abdominal pain, including hepatobiliary and pancreatic cases, lower abdominal and flank pain, including many causes of right lower quadrant pain, and a section dedicated to bowel pathology, including an approach to bowel obstruction and bowel wall thickening. These focus on bread and butter pathologies and complications with special attention to imaging principles that you can take with you. There are some more challenging cases interspersed and here at the bottom, there are some more challenging cases as well that help you learn less common but clinically important entities. This more challenging section will expand over time. To show you how this course works, I'm gonna quickly show you a more bread and butter case, and then we'll go through a more challenging case together. So for example, for case five under bowel pathology here, the clinical history here listed is nausea and vomiting and to rule out obstruction. We click on the case five unknown link to access the case as an unknown. You can use the link in the description or the QR code on the screen for now, and feel free to pause the video if you wanna take a look at the case. Once you've looked at the case in detail, you can click on the answers and explanations link here. Here we see the answer across the top. So this is a small bowel obstruction due to adhesions. And if you click on the blue square in the top right corner of the screen, you'll see an explanation including everything that you need to know, including a walkthrough of imaging findings and some key imaging pearls. For this first case of small bowel obstruction, I also take you through my approach to looking at small bowel obstructions on CT so that you know what to look for. As part of this approach, we want to answer the following questions. One, is there a bowel obstruction? Two, if yes, what is the cause of the obstruction? Three, is there a closed loop obstruction? And then four, are there complications? Specifically, are there signs of bowel ischemia? In the answers, we go through how to practically answer those questions and then walk through the imaging findings in this case following that approach. The imaging walkthroughs in the course will have links embedded in them that you can click on that will navigate to the appropriate image with annotations. So let's go through the imaging findings in this case. So the first question that we said we wanted to answer was, is there a small bowel obstruction? Um, the definition of small bowel obstruction was discussed in the answer section, but here to go through the findings, we have small bowel dilatation proximally up to 3.2 cm or 3.2 centimeters. Uh, so over 2.5 centimeters on CT is considered dilated, but even more important than the measurement itself is the morphology of the small bowel. It looks uh, tensely distended. If we follow the small bowel loops, we will eventually get down to an abrupt transition point. Abrupt transition point has uh, dilated loops just proximal to it and then collapsed or normal caliber loops uh, distal to the transition point. So here you can see the uh, dilated loop with small bowel feces sign or fecalization, and then an abrupt change in caliber uh, and change in direction here with the small bowel distal to the transition point, uh, normal caliber slash collapsed. You can see that the distal small bowel loops in the right lower quadrant uh, are uh, collapsed or normal caliber. I should also mention that it is common to see fecalization slash small bowel feces sign just proximal to the site of obstruction like in this case. And if we show you the transition point on coronal images, you can see that from proximal to distal, 
uh, the bell is traveling in this direction. So we have an arrow indicating that. Uh, as we scroll through, you'll see that there's an abrupt uh, change in caliber as the small bell turns this corner and then the small bell emerges after the transition point and is normal caliber here. Okay, so we've determined that there's a small bowel obstruction. Step two is determining the etiology or cause. Um, so we notice that there's an abrupt angulation of bowel at the site of this uh, transition, um, and there's no mass, hernia, intussusception, or other obvious cause on CT. We also notice that this patient um, has had some sort of previous procedure uh, here. We see an incision site in the anterior abdominal wall. Um, so the cause here is most likely adhesions. Adhesions are bands of scar tissue that are present in patients with prior surgery um, and is also the most common cause of small bowel obstruction. Question three is, is there a closed loop small bowel obstruction? So we discuss what to specifically look for in a closed loop obstruction. So classically, you're gonna see dilated loops of small bowel proximally, an abrupt transition point, redilatation of that small bowel, and then a second abrupt transition point in close proximity to the first. Here there is no closed loop obstruction. And then lastly, we look for signs of ischemia. So here there is uh, some mesenteric stranding and some interloop fluid, uh, but there are no specific and late signs of ischemia uh, in this case. Uh, we cover the findings of ischemia here in the answers and in more detail in cases of bowel ischemia uh, and infarction elsewhere in the course. Since this was the first small bowel obstruction in this course, we also review the causes of small bowel obstruction, including adhesions, hernia, malignancy, intussusception, gallstones, and Meckel's diverticulum, all of which we have examples of in our course. Okay, so now that you know how the course works, let's go through a slightly more challenging case. So this is case two from our slightly more challenging section. Clinical history provided is nausea and vomiting in a young patient with no prior surgery. So we can click on the unknown case link here. You can open up the case yourself via the link in the description or using your phone using the QR code on the screen. I suggest pausing the video to have a look at this case in detail and then press play to review the answers. Okay, so once you've had a look at the case as an unknown, you can review the answers in the course by clicking the answers and explanation link on the right and the answer appears. This is a small bowel obstruction caused by a mesodiverticular band of a Meckel's diverticulum. Again, we can click the blue square in the top right corner to go through the imaging findings in detail. So let's approach this bowel obstruction the same way that we taught you to in the past. So first, let's answer the question, is there a small bowel obstruction? Well, again, we have dilated loops of small bowel approximately up to 3.3 centimeters. We have an abrupt transition point that's indicated here. Um, so you can see that there are dilated loops approximately here. Um, it turns this corner. The bowel loop remains dilated. Again, there are arrows here indicating uh, the direction of flow from proximal to distal. And then as it turns this corner, uh, we have a transition point and small bowel is now uh, completely collapsed uh, normal caliber slash completely collapsed here. Uh, so the findings are in keeping with a small bowel obstruction. Okay, so second, what is the cause of this bowel obstruction? Uh, so we don't see any obvious cause at first at the transition point. So there's no mass, no hernia, no intussusception, etc. cetera. Uh, there is abrupt angulation at this site of obstruction, but there's no history of any surgery uh, as noted in the, the clinical history here, or any other reason that this patient would have uh, adhesions at this site. Uh, so looking more closely, there is actually from this loop of bowel here, just proximal to the site of obstruction, a blind ended out pouching here. Uh, that is a Meckel's diverticulum. So to review this and show this a little bit better, uh, again, here we have our dilated loop of small bowel proximal to the site of obstruction. So uh, from proximal here to distal here. So we're following it from a left to right direction here. As we follow it down, I'm scrolling inferiorly, and then there is the abrupt site of transition. 
But if I scroll inferiorly from this loop of bow that travels posteriorly here, you'll also notice that the bow lumen connects to more lumen inferiorly and anteriorly. And if I follow that lumen, as the arrows here are uh, indicating, you'll notice that this is blind ending. Okay, so we've noticed that this is uh, blind ended here. So this is a Meckel's diverticulum. We'll show it on the coronal images as well, just to uh, show it a little bit better. So here is our dilated loop of bowel proximally that are fecalized. Uh, we have our abrupt transition point here. So you can see that dilated uh, abrupt transition point and then collapsed distal to it. Uh, but from this loop of bowel here that travels uh, towards the transition point, you'll notice that here is uh, an outpouching that is blind ended here. So this is the blind ended tip. So this is a Meckel's diverticulum. So this is a small bowel obstruction due to a mesodiverticular band that is associated with this Meckel's diverticulum. So what is a mesodiverticular band? Well, associated with a Meckel's, the mesodiverticular band is a band containing the remnant of the artery supplying the Meckel's called the Vitalin artery. The band can cause obstruction by trapping the bowel under it. Here we actually see the Vitalin artery here. If I follow it uh, down this way, supplying the Meckel's diverticulum. But regardless, the site of obstruction in close proximity to an identified Meckel's diverticulum without another cause suggests that a mesodiverticular band is the cause of an obstruction or the obstruction in the case. So this case was reported as an obstruction secondary to a mesodiverticular band, which was then confirmed in the operating room shortly after. So this is a relatively rare but important cause of small bowel obstruction, often not seen on imaging and discovered in the operating room. The key point here is that in a patient with no prior surgery and a small bowel obstruction without an obvious cause, you need to at least think about and look for a Meckel's diverticulum. I should note that in our course, Meckel's and its other complications are discussed in greater detail in a separate case. So again, the entire case includes over 40 emergency cases designed to help you master CT of the abdomen and pelvis. So as always, thanks for listening and I hope you learned something.